Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are not going to have any antics. We're just going to get to the point. There are a couple of things that you need to know. The first thing I'm going to let you know is that we're going to be putting up, well, we've already done it, but I'm going to be adding to it um, because there needs to be a statement added to this document because I need to be able to prove to all of you something that I've been saying for years. In 2012, I did a letter, a letter, a video, and it was called Ivan the Credit Munster. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up, and we're going to make this the same size as the screen, and this only happens because I shut down the screen. We were having a meeting yesterday, and while I was doing the meeting, as has been happening on a regular basis, we have nothing but technical problems to where nothing works and the system freezes up and yeah that's all supposed to be a coincidence well let me tell you how i handle that if they want to play i told you put me in coach i want to play too so the more they play with me you guys should hope that they keep playing with me the more they play with me the more information i get to reveal to you I told them to leave me to alone, so let's go ahead and show you what we're doing. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first thing, we need to let you know, on the original document, this has been updated on the website, so you can go to the website. And let's get rid of this, because no, don't need you to open back up. I do have to get rid of this, because this shouldn't be so, <clears throat> sorry, clearing my throat. It's early in the morning. Because I have not, um, see, don't need the comment thing, and I don't know how to get rid of that, and I'm not con too concerned about it right now, because this is not the official, official document. The one you have that we've created is yours. This is being done for a particular person, and so that document is different, and I ain't got to worry about this comment section. Uh, this is because it's the new 2020 Let's see if we can do that. Nope, that didn't work either. Let's see if we can unpin it. No, we need to unpin that. And let's get rid, rid of that. Well, I can't get rid of it because I don't know how. But I will get rid of it and I will focus on it later. Don't send me no text messages, no emails, no prompts, no anything. I don't need it. I'm not asking you for it. If I need it, I'll ask you for it to say, hey. Can you help me out? Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we made some small minor changes to this document. The first thing, we bring payor. I was rushing that day, as you saw. I was trying to put it out, and I put you guys on pause while I did it. But we took care of payor. We took care of drawer. What most of you don't know is what a promissory note, there must be a draw e must be a draw e we put the number there how the united states says that they're the draw e and we also took care of the i want you all to pay attention the three parties you have the pay e pay or draw e bills of exchange need all three just so that you know this document will be finished later today i can't tell you when this is tuesday the 12th of july can't tell you when it's going to be done. I can just tell you it's going to be done. Um, Penny has had 11, didn't say four, 11 litter pups. Two of them have deceased. Um, one of them, I believe, because she laid on top and didn't realize she had a whole of her weight on top of the young creature. And the other one, I believe, is because of the heat. We were 102 degrees yesterday. So I'm having to take a storage space that was the place that I kept the dogs during the winter. It's just a closet for the washing machine and dryer. But I had that thing filled. And so now I have to unfill it and have to reorganize things. And so I brought them inside and put fans on them and kept them cool. And they seem to have appreciated that. And then I put them back outside at night. And I'll bring them back in tomorrow. And we'll do that routine every day.
and we'll do that because they're still young. These dogs uh, were born on Sunday. Today's Tuesday. So they'll be three days old tomorrow. So there you go. That's just an update for those of you who wanted to know. Getting back to this instrument here, we have made it a point to put the act that we're relying on. It is very important that you all understand the act that we're relying on, Section 401, the Federal Reserve Act. Remember, the Federal Reserve is the central bank for the United States. That's going to be very important for the nature and scope of this video. I'll try not to keep it long, but for some of you, you don't understand. You cannot get this in a five-minute video. Can I get this in a 15-minute video? It's just not possible. Now, we've added all of the acts. This is the Presidential Proclamation 2039, 2049, 2040, and 2725. These were the amendments to the Presidential Proclamation, but none of those affected your being a banking institution. We are riding and rocking on the banking institution label. You want to be a banking institution? You do not need to be regulated as a banking institution. Stop calling yourselves private banks. Stop calling yourselves private banks. There are regulations for private banks. Call yourself a banking institution as Presidential Proclamation 2039 says. You really do need to understand 2040 highlights in 2039 that you are not regulated. There are no special regulations for you. The regulations are for those other financial institutions, such as those banking associations, those operating in the public as corporations. Don't believe me? Go back and read. And many of you are not taking the time to read. Now, I'm going to pause you all for just a second because i got to pull up some things. Ladies and gentlemen, what I can tell you is this. I've never seen any of these videos on money creation from day one, day zero. But if you take a listen to them, you will see that they're saying exactly everything that I've been saying. I've been saying this stuff since the 80s. Understand, I've never studied any of this. I just know this. Here is a professor. And look, Mr. Richard Warner, this man, I have a lot of respect for. Let's go to his video. We're going to let him talk for a second, okay? Look at what, what central banks are and how they operate. And that allows us to explain how banking works and why we have the recurring banking crisis. Let me do that. Um, in fact, it goes back to a fundamental question. How, how do banks operate? And actually, there have been three theories on banking for over a century, three different explanations. And I'm sure you will have encountered all three at one stage or another. The currently dominant theory is that oh, banks are just financial intermediaries. And this one is being reinforced a lot by the financial news reporting by statements from central banks and also the if you look into academic and research literature the leading journals say the journal of finance american journal considered number one in the area it considers banks nowadays as um, financial intermediaries what does this mean it means the banks gather deposits on the one hand and they do their thing, their analysis, and their credit risk assessment, all these things, whatever it is, good or bad, and then they lend those deposits. So they're just in the middle, a middleman. There's the middleman theory of banking. That one is currently dominant. And also bank regulation, how actually regulators look at banks and how they regulate them. The entire approach to regulation, which you know is this Basel approach, we can come back to the specifics, but this Basel approach is also based on the assumption, the belief that banks are just the middlemen. They gather deposits and they lend them out. Now, if you go back in this Journal of Finance to the 1960s, you might get confused because it's the same journal, but in the 60s, they were talking very differently in this journal. Because then, still, just about, 
the previous theory of banking was dominant, which was dominant from the 1920s to the 1960s. And that one, you will also have heard, maybe once or twice before, the fractional reserve theory of banking. This one is connected to another concept known as the money multiplier. I think a lot of ears of those who haven't looked in, into economics and finance should prick up now. When I was a student and I heard this money multiplier, oh, that sounds interesting, I thought. <laughs> well, what is that? The money multiplier, the magic money tree. So, well, just very briefly. In fact, there's a similarity, the, the money, fractional reserve, money multiplier theory of banking to the middleman intermedia, intermediary theory of banking. Namely, it says, Yes, each individual bank is an intermediary. It's also this fractional reserve theory also says that. But they say, as you put many banks together, so you've got many banks now, they interact and they do their things, overlapping, interacting, then something happens. Somehow in the system, as the banks interact and operate together, money is being created. There is money creation going on. It's not the central bank. We're not talking about central bank money creation, okay? Now, the actual technical details are a little bit complex. Students are always confused. And, and there's actually a reason it's meant to be confusing. So don't worry if you think this, this sounds a bit confusing. You can look it up later. Fractional reserve theory of banking, money multiplier. The main point is, it says each bank is, an, is a middleman, an intermediary. But in aggregate, collectively, and it's interesting that there's a recognition, we have to look at something systemic, which is different from each individual um, bank. Something happens and money is being created. And of course, you can imagine if that's true and if money is being created, this will have an impact. There will be some consequence. This, therefore, means there should be a different approach to bank regulation. And the approach to bank regulation, going hand in hand with this fractional reserve, money multiplier theory of banking, is the old reserve requirement approach to bank regulation, which was dominant, in fact, during that era when fractional reserve theory itself was dominant, um, which was until the early 80s, 1980s. Even the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England were looking at reserve requirements. It's a bit monetarist, you know, looking at money aggregates. But then that was scrapped as from the 60s, 70s onwards, this financial intermediation theory of banking became dominant. And then we have the Basel approach, which is all about capital adequacy. It's all about capital, not reserves. We'll come back to this regulation. But okay, now there's one more theory of banking. We need the to most important. Now, now that we've come this far. Namely, until roughly the 1920s, this theory was dominant. And this theory says that no, banks are not financial intermediaries, neither individually nor collectively. So this is a different theory. This theory says when a bank gives out a loan, a bank loan, we're just talking about ordinary banks, commercial banks. When they give out a bank loan, then money is being created. Money is being created essentially out of nothing. Economists tend to write ex nihilo because it's a bit embarrassing, out of nothing, and it's too obvious, it's, it sounds too shocking. So put it in Latin, it sounds more technical. This theory was dominant um, until the 1920s. Now we've got this all, these three theories. If the, the oldest theory... Now we're going to stop there. He has done many of discussions where he talks about how money works. I haven't seen this video yet, but I encourage you to go and listen to the professor. This is the video I've listened to. This one, he's a little bit more concise. He's not like speaking to an audience as he is here, where he's mixing his words. You see, right now, I don't think he is as prepared as he should be. You can see he's a little bit, uh, hasn't had any rest. So I would listen to this one. Why? Because this is four years ago. This video is hmm, roughly about the same time. I would listen to this one because he's a little bit more concise than how he explains it. However, we're going to go to this video.
how is money created? Now, this is not a professor. This is just a gentleman from Australia. But this gentleman from Australia, everything you need to know, hey, he tells you everything you need to know. But we're going to go to 19 minutes and roughly about 30 seconds. Okay? I need you to hear something. It is issued right. by a government or corporation. Central banks, which have no savings, can create money to buy these bonds. So here's an important question. Can a central bank go bankrupt? Can they? Well, according to the European Central Bank, which published a paper in 2016, central banks are protected from insolvency due to their ability to create more money. If you think this sounds... Now, I apologize. The system went a lot further than it should have. Give me a second. Uh, okay. This is where we need to be. I said 19. We're going to go to 18. But I wanted to show you the thing about central banks, how they can't go bankrupt. The reason why they can't go bankrupt is because the central bank gets to create money. So they will never go bankrupt because they will always get to create money. Central banks will never go bankrupt because they always get to create money. Let's find out how. That's Everywhere. fake money, though. That's not real money. That's fake money. That's two hundred. Whoa, wait a minute. Hold on. What'd you say? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let, let's find him back. We're going to start him right about here. Okay. It's seeming to have less of an effect as it continues. We have a lot of good faith based on the, the prowess of the U.S. printing press. I mean, the U United States. Now, we're going to stop right here. I want you all to pay attention to her. Listen to what he says, but pay attention to her. Watch her reaction and what she's trying not to have the public know. Maintains reserve currency status. That's Everywhere fake money, though. That's not real money. That's fake money. That's $200 trillion of fake money. Do you see her? Now, watch how... She purposely recognizes what he just did and knows that that information is not to be public. He said that's fake money, what they're doing. The central banks, what they're doing is fake money. And she tells him to be quiet. She's not joking like I do all the time going, shh. Okay, hold on. Oh, you're, you're, you're really? Did you, did you see her? Oh, you're, you're really? In other words, you said that in public? Hold on, let's see what he says again. Hundreds of billions of dollars in mere hours. It's seeming to have less of an effect as it continues. We yeah. have a lot of good faith based on the, the prowess of the U.S. printing press. I mean, the U United States maintains reserve currency status. That's Everywhere fake money, though. That's not real money. That's fake money. That's $200 trillion of fake money. Oh, you're, you're, you're really? I know, but it's all. Did, did you see? Did you see that interchange of communication? Oh, you're, you're really? Ladies and gentlemen, you guys are not supposed to know this. From day one, we've been telling you about the credits. We've been telling you that you have an obligation. See, the money that's being lent to the bank is being lent to the banks because you are paying back something. It is your energy. You can call it energy. You can call it whatever you want. It is your going out there and participating in the economy. That is why, as I told you before, you have to discharge the debt. How do you discharge the debt? By writing it off. Who can argue with you? They created a process for you to write it off. 1099 C's. Look, ladies and gentlemen, this is why Amera Legion was created. This is why each of the organizations that you've seen us create were created to offset debt. The government's been causing you a problem? I'll tell it to you the way it is. We created contracts so that you can renegotiate that junk with government. Government wants to change you to an all caps name? Wants to violate your rights? Well, we created the communication with you and government so that you get to recreate the agreement. And then it's got an arbitration clause, which places an obligation on them that they can't get around. That's their fault. 
for making up so many laws that they didn't realize that an arbitration clause can be created in a unilateral contract the same as they create unilateral contracts. And then you just discharge the debt. And you do the offset. It's called the common law right of offset that they can't get around. Why? Because it's a recognized right. And then you have a Mara Legion, which is simply a debt collector but they're doing debt collection a different way, exactly the way the law says. What law? 1864 is where you can start. 1864 Banking Act, there's a process for discharging debt and the bank's not accepting currency. Ladies and gentlemen, what is currency in the United States? That's the whole purpose of this video. So hold on, let's let him explain it to you. Yeah. We have a lot of good faith based on the, the prowess of the U.S. printing press. I mean, the U United States maintains reserve currency status. Now, what she says, United States maintains reserve currency status, meaning that the United States dollar is the world default currency. So let me tell you, she just said that there is a lot of faith in the world default currency in the United States dollar. Notice what he says right after that. That's Everywhere. fake money, though. That's not real money. That's fake money. Uh-oh, United States dollar is fake money. The world default currency is fake money. That's what he is saying. Ladies and gentlemen, he's absolutely right. The dollar bill has no value. You can't print $900 trillion. Remember, that's what they gave the people, so-called stimulus, $900 trillion. They tried to devalue the dollar. That's your inflation. Inflation is devaluation of a currency. Go ahead and look it up. $9 trillion. Everybody thought the government was doing them a favor. Ladies and gentlemen, that money that the government gave you, that came from you. You're the public. So go ahead and 1099C those so-called stimulus checks. Go ahead and write the government saying, I appreciate you loaning me my own money. But... I need you to go ahead and take care of this. I need you to discharge this junk. And then 1099 see that. So that you're not paying any taxes on that junk. You got taxes you have to pay? Why are you paying taxes? Ladies and gentlemen, the money is created by you. Why are you paying taxes on the money? Why are you paying taxes on anything? I told you, you need to be writing off your necessities. But let her talk. Money. That's two hundred trillion dollars of fake money. Oh, you're 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 really? She is speechless. He said that is fake money, and she shh. Now why couldn't they just do a retake? In because more than likely, it's seeming to. They are lies. Less of an effect as it continues. We yeah. have a lot of good faith based on the the prowess of the U.S. printing press. I mean, the U United States maintains reserve currency status. That's Everywhere fake money, though. That's not real money. That's fake money. That's $200 trillion of fake money. Oh, you're, 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 really? Did you see that reaction from her? That's, you cannot fake that. She is sitting up here going, oh God, what did you just say, fool? Do you know what you just did? Is what she's saying. Notice what he and look how he I does know, the no but it's with his head. He's saying faith. no. How long is sustain? How long is it? Exactly. He's saying stop lying. She said it's all based on faith. Pay attention. Pay attention. She's saying your belief in the economy is all based on faith. Faith in what? That the dollar is strong. And he's saying, how long? How long is that faith going to last? It's sustainable, though, wow. to go at that pace. The argument then becomes about the taxpayer who's pissed off and saying, let me get this straight. You can constantly bail yourself out, and you can constantly go print money with this quantitative easing. Why the hell do I have to pay taxes? Why do I pay Do you understand? You guys don't know the system that's been set up. So do yourself a favor. It's called money creation theory. Go and pull up money creation theory documents. Understand money creation. Do not watch, I understand this video right here. This video was done 
a while ago. It wasn't done seven years ago. It was done before seven years ago, and there have been several others. I told you, I go to people who stake their reputation. Dr. Warner, Professor Warner, he is a professor, and he's taking his whole career on understanding economics. He's an economic professor. You don't get to be a professor because you went to school for four years, okay? Do yourself a favor. This video has had 3 million views. It's a 2020 video. I want you all to understand what the gentleman is explaining. He's not doing all of the talking, but when I saw this video and I watched the whole thing, this is the part that got me, especially that part where she shushes him. Why? Because he said something that you've been hearing me say. Now, it's not technically fake money. It is real. It's just you don't understand what they mean by money. So if you listen to this video and you listen to Professor Warner, credit is the money. That's what TTOPP is. But you guys, when I say SACOM is giving you its tax credits, I need you all to understand that we have to make sure we do it right. We can't just do it. And see, there's not a lot of information on this. I understand it because I've known about this since the 80s. Like I said, people I got to be around and talk to, I couldn't tell you who they are to this day. I don't remember none of their names. I just remember when I was 9, 10 years old, my father would take me around these people he knew. The ones who hung around on 103rd Street in Compton, 109th Street and Wilmington Avenue. There was a liquor store there, and the guys used to sit out with a little brown bag, and he used to just sit and talk, and my father would go as a Jehovah's Witness, and he would witness to these people, and they would get into other conversations, and I would be allowed, while my brothers and sisters were out there playing with nothing, okay, I would sit there and listen. I was a sponge. Then I, when I would go to school, since I was bus to school and I had to get up at stupid 5 o'clock in the morning and be on the bus by 5.30 to get to school that started at 8 because I had to transfer from one bus to the next, go all the way downtown and blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to sit at the back of the bus with the workers who work downtown at these government buildings. And these are the conversations they would have. And I would sit in the back of the bus with them. Why? Because at that time, as I told you, kids didn't get to sit in the back of the bus. The older folks didn't allow it. And they would allow me. So when I say I've known about this stuff, because people have been talking about it around me all my life, I never had to study this stuff. When I tell you I've never studied this stuff, I'm telling you the truth. The fact that I don't have any memory of my childhood when I speak of retrograde amnesia, which, well documented now, thanks for the diagnosis, you ignorant, stupid mother. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I don't attribute the credit to those people whom I heard talking during that time because I can't tell you when they talked about any of this. I can only tell you that the communication with the God that I serve, whose name is Jehovah, that I give him the credit because he allows me to take all of the pieces of the puzzle and put it together. So let me show you the piece of the puzzle. We're going to, I didn't want to go over 30 minutes, but we're there because I had to explain something. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go back to the Presidential Proclamation and the Congressional Act, if you go back to the Presidential Proclamation and the Congressional Act, you're going to find that you get to create bills of exchange. Go and look up the Promissory Note Act. I believe it is 1747. But the England Promissory Note Act that's your best friend. I haven't read it yet. But notice that act is going to tell you what constitutes a promissory note. 
see what you guys don't understand is promissory notes are money. They have always been money when they're done right. You can't just write a promissory note just to be writing a promissory note. But let me give you the idea. I wrote a promissory note to the treasury, told them exactly what I was doing. Did it for $10 million because I told them that's what it's going to cost me to take care of what I need, my necessities. And I told them what my necessities will be every year thereafter. Now, $10 million is not a lot because of what I'm doing. And I explained to them what I was doing. That was two months ago. They have not responded to me. Guess what? I don't care if they respond to me because I get to write that $10 million off because I wrote them a promissory note. Okay, and now I get to take the Treasury to court under Section 401, Paragraph 18, Sub Paragraph 6. Why? Because my promissory note was an obligation of the United States. Now, some of you are going to go ahead and try to duplicate what I just said, and you don't understand the mechanics of it. You're just going to do it because you heard me say the way I did it, and then you're going to sit up there, and, well, I, I'm going to do this because I understand this and that. Go right ahead. Knock yourself out. Again, I have been doing this a lot longer than you. I'm not doing this to get rich. Okay? If I want to be rich, I am rich. I was rich before this all started. I don't need money to be rich. I don't need to be rich according to somebody else's standards. I will be rich according to my own. Let's see. Nope. Sorry. Um, I don't allow updates when I'm not trying to update the thing. Now, what you all need to know, it's it's four o'clock in the morning. I could not get any sleep today. It's been a very stressful day because I had to figure out what to do with the dogs. Because I don't run the air conditioning. I don't need the air conditioning because my body temperature doesn't regulate like everybody else. When I keep complaining it's a hundred and some degrees, <laughs> my body doesn't feel like it's a hundred and some degrees. But at 100 and some degrees, I must keep myself hydrated, even though I feel like I'm in the high 80s, low 90s, when it's in the hundreds. Please understand, I still have to keep hydrated. I'm glad that they, well, technically, I'm glad that they broke my regulator. But the winter is horrible for me, because if it's 20 degrees, I feel like it's minus 10 degrees. Yeah, the colder we get, the colder I get. So the hotter we get, the more I can tolerate. That's why I moved to Arizona, and Arizona wasn't a problem. Which is why I was out working in 123 degree heat. I can handle the heat. Can't handle the cold. Well, anyway, it's been a very stressful day. Worrying about the dogs. Looking at her looking at me. Uh, Penny. She's never been through this before. And so we're going through it together. But she understands that I'm not her enemy. She won't let Max get anywhere near her. <laughs> I told him, you may have helped produce this, but she ain't playing with you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I was going to let y'all go. I hope this information is beneficial. I hope y'all take it to heart. I hope it does y'all some benefit. What I have to do is I have to go about having my Coke and my smile. And we will have a conversation later about all of this. This particular instrument, like I said, will be finished today. The one that you see in front of you. For the most part, it has been updated with the payee payor and the footnotes one two and three but as far as the information preceding it the notification to whatever company that information i'll be adding in and then completing this later today now mind you i could have kept this to myself and only did it for this group of people that group of people but i'm putting it out there for all of you this is not going to destroy the economy this is actually going to help offset a lot of that debt that they've been creating. Look, ladies and gentlemen, the United States is allowing what's going on in our world because they do not want what happened in the year 2000 to happen again, where they actually balance the budget and they're 
credit payments became payable and due immediately. They don't want that to happen again. That's why they've been allowing them to exponentially spend money. That's why Biden sits up there and is nominated so-called president so that he could spend money. That's why Barack Obama could go into office and sit up there. They, they try to claim it was done under Bush. It was not done under Bush. Barack Obama signed that check. Given the banks $25 trillion. That's right, you heard me. So those two videos I showed you, go and watch them. And then understand, I promise you, why they gave them $25 trillion. All right, got to go. Y'all take care. Adios. If I can just find this button right here.